Covalent bonding. Covalent bonds occur when two or more nonmetals bond with one another. Okay, as we uh, just said a moment ago, covalent bonds can also be identified by calculating the change in the electronegativity between the two numbers. So if that difference is less than 1.7, we have a polar covalent bond. Polar covalent bond having uh, being less than 1.7. And remember, even though we know when we look at the periodic table, well, we have metal, non-metal, ionic. Okay, non-metal, non-metal, covalent. We need, we should be going and calculating this change in the electronegativity. Okay. Because that's really going to tell us, well, we know that if, if it's ionic, we know one atom, the metal is, is positive, the non-metal is negative. But with covalence, by calculating that change in electronegativity, we will know if it's polar covalent, meaning that something is partially positive and the other atom is partially negative. So the atom that is partially negative, right, the atom that is partially negative is the one that's going to have the higher electronegativity number, right? which, all, which means that the other one's got to be the slightly positive. But if the numbers are 0 0.5 to 0, we're looking at something called nonpolar covalent, which means there is an equal okay, sharing of electrons. Okay, there's an equal sharing. Even though you, you, you will have a slight change, slight difference in the electronegativity between the two, we don't treat it as one being slightly positive, one being slightly negative. We consider it pretty much negligible, that little change in the electronegativity. And so we treat it as if it's nonpolar covalent. So, when oxygen bonds with itself, it shares two pairs of electrons, forming a double bond. They share their electrons equally with one another to form a pure covalent bond, right? And pure covalent bond, another word for this, really, nonpolar. Nonpolar covalent. So, uh, bonds such as O2 are considered diatomic molecules, right? Like it's, it's, Two of the same molecule, diatomic. So two atoms that are the same. Okay. Now, what is the electronegativity number of oxygen? Someone give me the electronegativity. So we're going to calculate the change in the electronegativity. 3.44. Okay. Subtracted by itself, which gives us that zero. Okay. We know we don't really have to show the math for that, okay? But we're but we're just I'm just showing to you guys. Yeah, you should be able to subtract something by itself. That's something back in elementary, right? We we know if we and we have five apples and we take them away, we've got how many apples? Zero, right? So anytime we subtract something from itself, zero. Okay. So what we have here now is well, let's 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 draw oxygen. So oxygen, we have one, two, three, four. Five. I'm going to draw it a little different here. Six. Uh, sorry, six. six. Why am I going? I'm thinking something else. Okay, so we have oxygen has six um, valence electrons. Another oxygen also. Two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. So now we have one lonely electron with another lonely electron. Two lonely electrons from each atom are going to share with one another. Okay? These other lonely electrons here are also going to share with one another. Now, to draw this properly, we start off by drawing our symbols for oxygen. How many times do they share with one another? Twice. Twice. So we draw one line, two lines. These two lines now demonstrate that double bond. But now also still surrounding each oxygen are what? These other electrons, right? There's, here's one pair, here's another pair. Here's one pair, here's another pair. Now, is each one, any, either one of these oxygen slightly positive, slightly negative? No, there is an exact equal sharing. Okay? They're sharing those electrons 
okay, equally. So there's an equal sharing between these two atoms of oxygen. Okay. When atoms of carbon, of, of carbon bond with hydrogen, their electronegativities are relatively close to one another, that they share their electrons almost equally. So let's look at the uh, electronegativity, and we're, we, we just did this, so uh, let's, for, uh, for our viewers, <laughs> let's, uh, let's redo this question. So what is the electronegativity of, uh, of carbon? Electronegativity of carbon. Did I erase it off the board? No. 2.55. Okay. So that is of carbon. I'm going to subtract it by the electronegativity of hydrogen. 2.20. And my change in the electronegativity is 0.35, which makes this considered nonpolar covalent. So non-polar covalent, which means, what does it mean about their electrons? They share equally. They share equally their electrons. So we have carbon, and carbon has how many valence electrons? Four. One, two, three, four. Now, how many bonding sites does carbon have? Four bonding sites. How many hydrogens? Four. And each hydrogen has how many valence electrons? One. Which means each one of those hydrogens is going to share with each one of those carbons. Okay. So the bonding site, there's one here. Okay. And, and that's why when we draw the electrons, in our electron dot diagram, our Lewis dot diagram, we want to make sure that the electrons, that we, we, we draw them in that configuration because we don't want to pair them up, right? So here's one sharing, another sharing, another sharing, another sharing. So the central atom is carbon and it's bonded once to four different hydrogens which also states because our electronegativity number is that low, we know there is an equal sharing. Okay. There's an equal sharing of these electrons. 